Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head over to Latvia once again and we're going to return to a brewery that's featured on the channel a number of times before. I've had some really nice beers from these guys over the years, a good few different styles, but if people were to ask me about this brewery, I would say that they're probably best known for their different kinds of New England, hazy, whatever you want to call them, IPAs. This is probably the style category in which the brewery really made their name, but in more recent recent times they've been doing some really big kind of fruity, juicy, smoothie, sour type beers which have been really good and also experimenting a little bit more with the bigger, darker side of things too and I've been very impressed with what these guys have released. Now the beer we're going to have a look at today is a style that I have tried from these guys before. It's one that I know they can do very well but we've not tried this style from the brewery in quite a little while and this is one of their latest releases through Seastem Bolaget here in Sweden too. So needless to say I'm very curious to see what this beer is going to have in store for us. Hopefully it's another good one, hopefully it makes for an interesting review and as always I hope that you guys watching enjoy my take on this one as well. So uh, yeah, for this review then we are going to head to a little place called Emuri which is in the Adagi region just to the northeast of Riga, the Latvian capital and that of course means that we're going to have a look at yet another beer from Arpus Brewing Company who are probably the best known of the Latvian craft breweries across the European continent. But this beer is called Vanilla Maple Imperial Stout. It comes in at 12% ABV and I think from the name you can guess what style this one is. I have to admit though I am very curious to see whether this is going to be more of an Imperial Sweet Stout like you can get in the States or whether it's going to be a kind of more uh, pastry stout type beer. So uh, yeah, but this was released as part of the Tilferig sortiment through Sistembolag here in Sweden in the, yeah, just toward the middle of uh, June 2023 and this is my first stout from Arpus Brewing in maybe about two years or something like that. So this should be quite an interesting one to try. But anyway, let's crack on then and see what this beer is going to have in store for us. So, as always with my reviews, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you do want to get straight to the tasting though, just fast forward. All the usual links can be found in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Arpus Brewing Company before and we will no doubt add more to that list in the near future. But there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The support that you give is massively appreciated. And remember, you can go into the channel homepage and search for beer using the geography tagging system. So just go in there, use the little search bar, put your hometown, state, county, whatever you like. If you've reviewed beers from the area that you search for, they will pop up. Failing that, though, you can check out the playlist of beers from different countries. You'll find this one in the Latvian playlist along with a number of other things. But I do hope we can add to that one as time goes on and add a few different breweries to it as well. So do give me your Latvian brewery recommendations. I'd love to explore the Latvian beer scene a little bit more. But yeah, you can check out the playlist of beers from other countries as well. But yeah, let's go on to my brewery notes then and I'll tell you a little bit about Arpus Brewing Company once again. And I will apologise in advance for any bad Latvian pronunciations. It's a language that I have no familiarity with. But uh, yeah, anyway, so... Uh, Arpus Brewing Company, as I've mentioned to radio, are based in Latvia and the company was founded back in 2017 by two home brewers. So this is Geertz T. Homirovs and Vladimir Berezins. And they started off as a gypsy brewery and were based primarily in the Riga area of Latvia. And in the first year they brewed at four different breweries around the country, which they say really helped them uh, understand about using different brewing equipment, brewing different styles as well. And they just said that generally this was a very good grounding experience experience for them. Uh, over the next little while they continued to build up the different recipes that they were doing, get their name out there a little bit more and then in 2019 they received um, they received some investment or they received some funding from the Latvian Investment and Development Agency and the EU Agricultural Fund for Rural Development and because of this they were able to invest around 200,000 euros in creating their own brewing facility which they did in Emuri in the Adazi region to the north of Riga or to the northeast of Riga I should say but the new brewery helped them increase their output dramatically and apparently they export around 90% of their output but this is very common in the Baltic countries because you have to remember these countries are very small in terms of population uh, uh, you know for example Estonia is only about 1.3 million people I think Latvia is about 1.7 or something like that and then Lithuania is uh, I think toward 3 million if I remember correctly so a number of the Latvian craft breweries export a huge amount 
of their craft beer. And it's always good for us over here in the slightly bigger countries to, uh, to try some of the Baltic beers because it's always usually good and it's pretty cheap as well, I have to say. But um, yeah, these guys are probably the best known of the Latvian craft breweries because of how they've modelled their business. Uh, but like I said, over the years, these guys have become very well known for their different kinds of New England hazy IPAs, also for their big fruity sour beers as well. And in more recent times, they've been experimenting with the bigger, darker things, such as this beer. But as of June 2023, when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have produced just over 65 different kinds of beer. And the name Arpus that they use comes from the Latvian word that means outside of the box. So yeah, that is everything I can really tell you about Arpus Brewing Company for the moment. If you want to learn more about these guys, you can of course check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all the different beers that these guys have done. So uh, yeah, let's go on and actually have a little look at this beer then before we taste it. So i uh, have a little look at the can, I should say. So as you can see, this one is pretty much similar in terms of artwork to what we've seen from uh, Arpus Brewing Company before, except you've got a little kind of... Uh, on this one, you have a sort of uh, unfocused picture of church candles or something like this, so that's quite interesting. But there you can see the Arpus Brewing Company symbol, plain silver top on the can here. This is a 440 milliliter can, incidentally, and as we mentioned earlier, this one is a 12% imperial stout with vanilla and maple syrup added into the brew, and um, it says that this one contains barley, oats and wheat. So I'm expecting that this one will be quite a creamy and sort of sweet uh, type stout. Whether it's going to be a pastry stout though, I'm not 100% sure. But if I remember correctly, this beer cost me somewhere in the region of 80 Swedish kroner. So it wasn't too expensive when you consider how strong it is. That translates to roughly about eight euros for the can, seven pounds sterling, maybe about nine dollars American for those of you watching in different places but yeah as I say a 12% imported imperial stout I think that's a pretty damn good price actually but um, yeah good stuff this one as I said the name of this beer is simply vanilla maple imperial stout it's the 12% version there's probably been a few different ones like this because Arpus tend to just name their beers after the different hops or adjuncts or whatever that they use so um, yeah that's that but let's get this guy out into the glass and see what it's all about very curious to try this one. So let's do this then. This does look very good. I will say the aroma on this one from having just opened it up, I think it's quite mild, but we'll have a closer look at that and see what it's all about. Before the head disappears on this one though, because I think it will disappear quite quickly, you can see that this beer poured with a little bit over a half finger of a frothy, I would say medium to dark, uh, tan head that has just faded away to be a very thin foamy layer it's kind of just leaving a ring around the edge of the glass there actually but it does look very very nice there's virtually no carbonation uh, on the top of this beer now but one or two big bubbles sticking toward the side of the glass a few little ones going up toward uh, the surface there but you can see just a little ring of carbonation around the edge of the glass and there's some medium size bubbles along with a few sort of foamy things but yeah I would have actually expected the head on this one to hold up a little bit more because of the presence of the wheat wheat is usually something that encourages head retention in, uh, in imperial stouts but uh, yeah in any case it looks pretty much exactly as you would expect from this style a lovely dark sort of ebony rosewood colour if we shine the light through this one it has a little bit of that kind of coca-cola pepsi max coloured edge to it but not too much and this one doesn't have a lot of opacity to it and that probably is due to the presence of the oats and wheat but remember the color of your beer depends on a few different things one the type of malts that you use this goes a long way to determining your EBC rating two the length of your wort boil is also going to play a role because the longer you boil the wort the more the sugars caramelize and thus you get a darker color of beer but any battle that you do or any adjuncts you put into the beer will affect the color of it as well but uh, yeah when it comes to imperial stouts it's very difficult to affect the uh, the the colour of the of, of the beer with uh, adjuncts or with uh, barrel aging, of course, because of the presence of like special B or black malt or whatever. Black beers are very difficult to kind of mess around with in that particular way. But appearance-wise, nothing really untoward about this beer when you consider what style it is. I think we can move on from this now and have a little look at the aroma 
and see what the beer is all about. So let's do this. Yeah. <laughs> this is one of the things with Arcus that I always find really interesting. So a lot of their beers are... They, as I said earlier, these guys love to play with different adjuncts and just kind of mess around with them. And quite often what you'll find from the Arpus beers is they're, they are really exactly as they say on the, the tin. So, I mean, the last one we, ha we had, the collaboration with Beretta Brewing Company, what was that? A peach, apricot, lemon, uh, strawberry, maple, vanilla sour or something like that. You got all of these things out, the aroma. The aroma was very, very straightforward. And it's kind of similar with this, actually. I mean, uh, this is, I'll tell you straight away that I think this is going to be a pastry stout. This is a more modern sort of pastry stout type beer. And I will be honest and tell you before I try this one, the pastry stout as a substyle is one that I don't enjoy all that much. If it comes down to a sweet stout, I would rather have something that's a little bit more like the old American uh, sweet stout. Some of them can be good, though, I will say that. Uh, but they can, this style can be a little bit of a hit or miss with me. But I have enjoyed the ones from Arthas in the past, but you can tell straight away with this one, this is more of a kind of pastry stout because you get a little bit of this almost like marzipan or granola type aroma out of this beer. So um, yeah, this is kind of interesting, but the maple syrup is the thing that really jumps out of this beer when you take your first look at the nose. Uh, but yeah, let's try and break this one down for you and just describe it a little bit more in depth actually. So. Yeah, if you sugar the beer up with this one, yeah, it's one of these kind of modern sort of cakey pastry uh, stout type beers. Um, yeah, it's almost a little bit sickly in terms of its uh, aroma. It's got that real, uh, that really big sweetness to it. But um, yeah, I've had pastry stouts before that have smelled like this. And I have to be honest again, I don't find the smell of these beers, that sort of sickly marzipan and sugary type thing, I don't find it overly pleasant. But some of them, as I say, they'll give you this aroma, but then when you taste them, they are really nicely done. But let's just, as I say, break this down and go into objectively, as we always do. So, um, the backbone of this beer, and I will say you do have to search for this. You've got a little touch of that roasty, toasty, well-fired um, bread crusty character in there, though, but not too much. Above that, there's a little bit of an almost, um, there, well, there's a little bit of woodiness in there, a little bit of kind of like Werther's Original and Vanilla type quality within the woody character as well. But then you start to get these kind of cakey, granola type notes. It's almost like there's a little bit of a kind of, in Sweden they call it a kneke brood, like it's not quite a rice cracker. Um, but yeah, it has this sort of crackery note. Uh, sitting above that little bit of bread crust that I was talking about. And then, yeah, you've got a mixture of, like, chocolate muffin and chocolate brownie coming out of the beer above that. The more that you smell of it, you do get a little bit of the vanilla coming out of this one, for sure. And then there's a wee bit of a nutty uh, kind of quality out of this one, like a sort of almondy, pecan type thing. Um, above these sort of cakey notes, though, there's a little touch of chocolate to this one, but not overly much, I would say. Um, it maybe has a little bit of a kind of like a dry 30 to 40 percent cocoa chocolate coming out of it, this beer. Like I say, not too much. But you do get, because of the, the presence of the maple syrup, you do get a lovely big kind of leathery brown sugary character to this one. If I didn't know there was maple syrup in this one, I would probably guess that that was due to a longer wort boil. So the maple syrup that's been used in this beer is actually really quite dry. And, you know, there's a few things you can do with these imperial stouts to, to get what you like. You know, you can do like a double or even a triple mash if you really want to. That gives you a big sticky mouthfeel. And you can also boil the wort longer. Um, and it gives you a more leathery brown sugary note and gives you more complexity to the beer. So as I say, if I was smelling this one blind, I would think this had a little bit of a longer wort boil rather than anything else. But yeah, above that, you start to get, there's a little bit of a slightly treacle molasses -y note in the middle of the nose. You've also got some sweet caramel and a very lightly toasty brown sugar to this one as well. But like I say, the more and more that I smell of this beer, I get this sort of um, marzipan-y, 
he's stressed out. Uh, take note of this one. It's a little bit like icing sugar as well, actually. So yeah, I have a real feeling that this beer will be more along the lines of the kind of pastry stout uh, side of things. So um, yeah, this could be quite interesting to try for sure. Um, yeah, I think that covers everything we need to say about the malty and uh, yeasty side of things in this beer. So on the hoppy side of things, um, this beer... Mm, I'd be very curious to know. I actually just noticed there. I was wondering about that. It doesn't say that uh, it contains uh, hops, actually. So, oh no, it does. Sorry, I'm telling you lies. I thought I was going to say that because um, the thing with imperial stouts in the first place is that they're not the most hop forward of your style. We know this. Um, but yeah, this one was so smooth that you get very little green component out of it. I was just going to say that you get a little tiny bit of earthiness, a little bit of herbal character, and a very very light grassiness, but other than that, there's not too much to, uh, there really isn't too much to report in terms of uh, of what's going on on the, the hoppy side of this beer. The green component's really quite minimal. Um, yeah, it's interesting stuff. So, on the, uh, yeah, on the fruity side of things, I would say that this beer is a little bit more, um, it has got a little bit of a kind of juicy plummy character to it, there's also a little touch of that drier prune and kind of figgy quality coming out of this one too, but um, yeah, other than that, it gives you a little bit of black currant, so yeah, like a little bit of fig, a little bit of black currant, and a wee bit of, uh, as I say, there's almost, you could always um, maybe say there's a little bit of cherry in this one, but yeah, a little bit of cherry, a little bit of, um, yeah, a little bit of cherry, a little bit of uh, plum and prune underneath, but yeah, a little bit of fig and black currant as well. So, um, yeah, the way this beer goes together is, uh, is really very nice, actually. But, uh, yeah, as I say, it does really remind me of a kind of pastry stout, so I'm curious to see whether that's what's going to come to the fore when we actually taste the thing. So we'll put the rest in. I'm going to share this beer after this video with my friend, of course. But, uh, yeah, it's always nice to pour the full thing and then split it up a little bit later because you do get your sediment at the bottom. So, But, uh, yeah, let's have a little taste of this one then and see what it's all about. As I always say, it'll take some time to enjoy that aroma before you get stuck in. But, yeah, this one is the Vanilla and Maple Imperial Stout at 12% ABV released in uh, 2023 from Arpus Brewing Company in Emuri Adazi over in uh, Latvia. Let's get stuck in. Slanja, Skoll, cheers, Prieka. This is pretty nice, actually. Um, it's it does have a little bit of that kind of marzipani, cakey, slightly granola, pastry stout type thing to it, but it's not as pungent in the actual flavour as it was in the aroma. I think that's a fair statement to make about this one. So yeah, it is very much a, a pastry stout this beer. And as I say, you'll get these flavours that I've just mentioned coming out of the beer the further into the aftertaste that you'll go. But um, yeah, other than that, it's uh, really nicely done. As I say, um, as I say, I'm not the ma the biggest fan of these bigger kind of sweet beers like this. I have to admit, I like if I want a sweet stout like this, I like the more kind of um, old school American style uh, sweet stouts, like you know, the, the you know the Terrapin Brewing and stuff like this. So. Yeah, these kind of things. But pastry stouts, of course, have become exceedingly popular 
over the last uh, the last couple of years. But yeah, we've had um, the last imperial stout I had from Arpus was wasn't quite as sort of marzipani and cakey and stuff as this one. It was more along the lines of a slightly sweeter stout from what I remember. But uh, yeah, in terms of pace. All right, guys. Sorry for the little edit there. Just uh, the camera decided it was going to stop working, but we fixed it. So yeah, as I was saying, the the pastry stout style is something that can be a bit of a hit or a miss for me. This one has a little bit of the kind of marzipani type thing that I'm not such a big fan of, but the rest of it kind of balances out quite nicely, and it leans also a little bit toward that kind of American sweet stout category. But uh, as I always say, let's just break the beer down and describe the flavour a little bit more in depth and see how we go. So we'll start in the middle third of the palette, as we always do. So yeah, middle third of the palette. The backbone of the beer, you do have a little tiny touch of a roasty toasty, um, kind of well-fired bread crusty character there, but that is very, very minimal. The backbone in this beer, is very much like a kind of cakey edge, if that makes sense. Um, as you go further forward on that middle third of the palette, there's a little touch of kind of woody character to this one in there. You've got a little bit of like Werther's Original Butter Candy, Butterscotch and a wee touch of vanilla mixing in with the woody characters further forward on that middle third of your palette. But yeah, the, the uh, above the kind of it really is like a kind of, it's like the edge of a kind of chocolate muffin or some kind of um, kind of sponge cake type thing. That's what the backbone of your beer is. As I say, a little tiny bit of roasty toastiness in there, but not overly much, actually. Uh, but yeah, above the kind of cake edge that you have in this beer, above that you start to get a more fluffy, like white sponge cakey type note out of the beer. And for me, the sponge cakey type notes that you get in this beer are kind of like marzipan leaning. You do get a little touch of a kind of nutty character in there, and there's almost a little bit like a slightly infused kind of brown sugary character coming out of this beer as well. But yeah, the that kind of cakey, sponge cakey sort of thing is what dominates the middle of your palate in this beer. And I'll see you've got that marzipan, you know, a little bit of nuttiness and stuff in there. And yeah, the kind of it's kind of like the sponge cake is infused with the vanilla. I think that's what you'd really get in this one. But above the kind of above the sort of sponge cakey layer, you can feel there is a wee bit of a um, yeah, the, above the sponge cakey layer, there's a little bit of a, a kind of leathery brown sugary character. And this is the start of the maple syrup, of course. But I'm just trying to figure out if above the kind of vanilla sponge, there's maybe a little bit of chocolate. So, yeah, maybe above the vanilla sponge, you have a little kind of smattering layer of like a cocoa nibby. You no, know, it's like this kind of dry chocolatey type character. So that's quite interesting. So yeah, the kind of cocoa nibby, chocolatey type note that comes out of this one, I think, is um, is quite interesting. But then above that, yeah, you start to get all the you start to get the kind of um, cocoa nibby. Uh, sorry, you start to get the kind of more leathery uh, brown sugary notes from the maple syrup. So you've got a base layer there on the maple syrup, which is quite leathery and kind of quite dry so that's that really is quite interesting um, but then above that above that kind of leathery syrupy type layer you can feel there's a little bit of a toasty brown sugary layer in there as well uh, there's another sort of layer it's kind of like you've got a big circle in the middle of your palate actually so you've got the base layer of that circle is the kind of oily maple syrup then the next layer up you've got a little bit of a toasty brown sugar the next layer up and inside you have a little bit more of a kind of Werther's original butter candy, butterscotchy type thing. And then in the dead centre of your palate, you've got like a sweet caramelly honeycomb 
type quality coming out of this beer. So uh, yeah, that of course is all the maple syrup. Um, but yeah, it's quite a complex maple syrup, you know, that you get out of this one. But the further into the aftertaste you go, you get a little bit more of the kind of dryness and the vanilla from the kind of pastry stout base that this beer has. So that's interesting. So yeah, I do like how um, how that pieces together in this one. Um, yeah, I think the uh, I think that covers everything we need to say about the middle third of your palate in this beer. But this one is very very sweet. It's actually one of the more kind of sickly pastry stouts that I have. I will say that this one for me it is it's got a nice flavour to it and it's drinkable. But drinking a four hundred and forty milliliter can of this thing would be an absolute push actually. I have to admit, I don't know why these things aren't sold in the kind of smaller 330s or whatever, but you know, I would be happy with maybe like 200 mils of this or um, or something. I would I would say that, but it would be different. I do prefer the kind of milk stouts and sweet stouts from the US and also the old school Russian Imperial stouts. As I say, pastry stout is just not my thing and this is most definitely in the kind of pastry stout category, but it is at the same time a very well done uh, pastry so I don't want to see anything bad about Arpus because this is a good beer but like I say it's just a little bit too sweet and sa uh, it's, it's a little bit too kind of sweet and savoury for me at this, uh, in that regard but yeah that's the middle third of the palate covered let's have a little look at the back third of the palate and as I always say the back third of the palate usually gives you similar flavours but they just come out in different intensities uh, but generally speaking you do get more dry and bitter flavours further back on the palate and sweeter flavours further forward but yeah that border region between middle and back third of the palate, you do get a little bit of a kind of brown bready sort of sponge cakey build up in there, which is nice. But the base of that back third of the palate, you've got a nice little bit of, um, as I say, you've got a little bit of a more kind of bread crusty note there on the back third of the palate. But then, yeah, above that, you get the sweeter cake crust, and then you've got a more fluffy and airy sort of sponge cakey type note to this one and it's a very kind of brown sugary vanilla like airy vanilla sponge it's kind of like that but then above everything else you do get a little bit of the drier side of the kind of maple syrup uh, honeycomb type thing uh, coming out of this beer so yeah that is quite nice I have to say um on the yeah on the uh, yeasty side of things. The yeasty character always sits above the back third of your palate in these uh, beers, in my opinion. So yeah, you've got a little bit of a yeasty character coming out of this one. And for me, the yeasty character is like a more kind of dense, brandy-soaked, um, kind of brown sugar, vanilla sponge type thing. But it's wrapped in this little bit of honeycomb character. So yeah, you can absolutely feel that yeasty note on top of the back third of the palate. But yeah, definitely, uh, the back third of the palate, the flavour is taller. And as you come further forward into the middle third of your palate, the flavour just kind of squashes down and uh, goes together that little bit more. So, yeah, that's interesting stuff for me. Um, I think that covers the malty and yeasty side of this beer, to be honest with you. So let's go on to the hoppy side of things then. So, yeah, as I said to you earlier, um, these beers... The pastry stouts, they're not, you know, imperial stouts generally are not the most hop forward styles of beers, but the pastry stouts, um, the, the, yeah, the pastry stouts um, are genuinely even less hoppy. But yeah, on the green, you do get a little bit of green component out of this one though, so there's a little bit of smooth earthiness in there. As you move further forward, you've got a little touch of herbal character, and as you push further forward, a little bit of the earthiness and herbal character comes almost all the way forward. But on the front corners of your palate, you do have a little bit of kind of floral aromaticity uh, going on in this one, which is really nice. But around the front curve of the tongue, you've got a little bit of a lighter, more grassy character coming out of this beer. But the green component on this beer is very, very smooth. And um, yeah, I do like that about this one. So on the... Uh, yeah, on the... On the 
front third of your palate then, the fruity side of things, there's not too much to report in this beer actually. This is one of the other things I always find in pastry so you don't really get so much in the way of fruity character out of these. But that border region between front third and middle third of your palate, again you get a little bit of that kind of bready build up in the base but then it becomes a more kind of vanilla, brown sugary, sort of cocoa nibby type sponge. The base of that front third of the palate, you've got a little touch of roasty character in there but yeah, kind of cake edge and then the kind of more vanilla sponge type notes that we've talked about throughout the whole beer. Then you get that nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters just uh, roll the way out of the beer. So yeah, let's have a wee look at, uh, at that side of things. So the fruity side of this beer, it's a little bit sweeter in the beginning but then the further into it that you go, you start to get some of these kind of phenolic type qualities out of the beer. Um, so yeah, when you take the beer in, you have a little bit of a kind of oily, plum and slightly cherry-ish type flavour. So this is at the back of that front third of So a little bit of plum, a little bit of cherry type flavour. As you go further down, you start to get a little bit of a kind of pruny type character out of it. You also get the... Um, yeah, you also get a little bit of a kind of drier, datey sort of thing underneath. But then, yeah, as you move further forward toward the middle of your palate, you get a little bit of a kind of dry fig quality. And then as you move into the front half of that front third of your palate, there's a little bit of black currant there and maybe a little bit of a more oily blackberry on top of it. But yeah, I think the kind of dry fig and the black currant and the datey characters, these are what really linger into the aftertaste. And they sort of combine with that kind of marzipan -y flavour that you get from the whole vanilla sponge type thing that this beer has. But um, yeah, it's interesting this one. As I say, it's one of the more drinkable pastry stouts that I've had before. It's one of the ones where I'll, I like the flavour a little bit more, but like I say, I do find this style overall just very sickly, so I would certainly struggle to finish this can myself, absolutely. But I think that's everything we need to see about the overall flavour of this beer. So let's uh, round off this review then with a wee quick look at the mouthfeel. So, yeah, for me, the mouthfeel of this beer, it's definitely um, kind of bottom end of full bodied for me, top end of mid bodied. The carbonation is very, very smooth. It's got a lovely kind of creamy, oily, sort of silky type thing to it. But it is quite sickly sweet, this beer, I have to say that. In terms of IBUs, <coughs> this has got to be like 5 or 10 IBUs, uh, something like that. Very, very low in terms of its IBU count, absolutely. But, um, yeah, the uh, yeah on the IBU count, this is very, very low. Yeah, 10 IBUs at the absolute most. But the malt base, as we said, there's a little bit of roastiness in there. You've got a little bit of that kind of bread crusty character we said and you've got a kind of sponge cakey savoury type note to this one you've got the vanilla the kind of nutty characteristics and all this but then the sweeter notes on top of that but even the sweet side of this beer is quite dry and quite savoury and then you've also got some kind of uh, more juicy and oily fruity characters uh, coming out of this beer too but um, yeah overall the way that this one goes together I think is quite um, is quite interesting it's one of the better pastry stouts that I've come across and we know that um, Arcus can do these things very well but like I say this style is just uh, it's, it's not really for me um, if you give me the choice of a pastry stout or a pastry sour over like a milk stout or a Russian imperial stout or a smoothie sour uh, I would always pick the, the smoothie sour to be honest with you so yeah um, it's a good beer this one if you like pastry stouts you will like this beer and Arcus do some really good uh, IPAs, some really good um, sweet uh, sour beers as well, but uh, uh, and also some good pastry stouts. But this style, like I say, is just not for me. Uh, I remember the last Imperial Stout we had from Arpus was a little bit less um, kind of savoury than this one. One of the things that I'm not such a great fan of with pastry stouts is the kind of the, the sort of phenolic character. Yeah, the fruity notes. That I was talking about in this one, they do have that little bit of phenolic kind of cough syrupy type thing to them, I would say. So that's one of the things that kind of puts me off this beer a little bit. But like I say, it's a well done beer, but this style I just don't enjoy as much as other um, subcategories of the Imperial Stout, I have to say. 
but yeah, a thumbs up to uh, to Arpus on this one. I've enjoyed trying this beer, but like I say, I'm going to have to sh give this, you know, share this one and give it to my friend probably. But it's been really cool to review another Arpus Imperial Stout for you here on the channel, and I hope that you guys have enjoyed my take on this one. So uh, yeah, let's leave it at that. Once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Arpus Brewing Company as well. Uh, but this one is definitely for the more kind of uh, seasoned pastry imperial stout drinkers and those who love a kind of more sweet, savoury type thing. But yeah, interesting beer this one. And again, very good quality as we would always expect from Arpus, but just not to my personal taste, I would say. But yeah, thank you again for watching. Check out my social media, check out Arpus's social media, and I will see you guys on another beer review on the channel at some point in the future. But check out my social media, check out theirs, and I'll catch you guys very, very soon. This was the Vanilla Maple Imperial Stout at 12% EBV from Arpus Brewery in Amuri, Adazi in Latvia. Slanjit, Skull, cheers, and Priyaka.